Okay, here we are in Blender 2.57a, that's a Blender Stable. And I'm going to try to answer a viewer's question here real quick. Uh, basically, the other day I um, create a video and I posted it online. Let's see, I should have it right here. Uh, let's see, lower that volume down. And this is what the video looked like. And a viewer asked me how I did that. He asked if I used arrays. And you can get similar effects with arrays, but I did not use arrays in this uh, video. So real quick, we're going to go over the basics of creating something similar to that. Uh, so we'll start up Blender here. I'm going to delete the default cube, and I'm going to add in a, uh, a UV sphere. And I'm also going to add in a monkey. Let's go into the front view here. Let's scale that sphere up a little bit. And I'm going to rotate the monkey head on the x-axis, just to get it facing us. And I'm actually going to scale the monkey head down a little bit. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the sphere here. And I'm going to go to the objects window here. And under duplication, I'm going to choose vertices. And I'm going to choose uh, well, rotation, you can turn that on and off and see how it slightly changes stuff. But next I'm going to choose the monkey head and I'm going to shift select the sphere and hit control P for parent and parent the objects and right away. Let me go into uh, uh, textured mode here. Uh, you can see that the monkey heads are now surrounding the sphere. So basically it duplicated it everywhere there's a vertice on the sphere. You can also change it to faces and they'll put monkey heads where the faces are. And you have a few other options here, but we're going to go vertices in this case. Next, we're going to select the monkey head again uh, and scale it down some. I'm going to rotate it around. Now, in the uh, final video I made, I actually made a higher resolution sphere, uh, which would create more monkey heads, and I think I shrunk down the monkey heads more. But I'm just giving you a general idea here. I'm going to hit zero on my number pad to go to camera view and hit F12 now. And as you can see, the original monkey head and the spheres and the sphere uh, do not render out uh, because we're using the duplicate option, so it's rendering out all the duplicates. So that's the basic uh, option there for duplicating stuff. Uh, let's grab this camera and move it out a little bit. Uh, another thing we can change here to make it look a little bit better is our lighting. I'm going to grab the light here; it's already there. Move it out under the lighting option. I'm going to go and change this to an area. I'm going to change the distance to 10 and the energy probably to 0.5. And I'm going to turn the samples up, in this case, to about 3. I think I did like 6 or maybe 8 in the, uh, in the final version there. I'm going to turn the size up to 5. And the original one, I think I did two lightings. I did a side lighting here of a different color. But let's just render this out and see how it looks. The shadows are a little noisy, that's just because the sample rates are so low, we can definitely turn the sample rate up. Um, also you'll notice at the top of the sphere here how it kind of funnels in, twists in. Uh, you can actually change that slightly by uh, once again going into the object data uh, with the uh, sphere selected. And if we turn off rotation you can see how it changes how they rotate in. So. That's what rotation does there. I thought it looked better with a little spiral at the top, so I turned on rotation rather than having clean little uh, spheres around, circles around. You know what I mean. Anyway, so now for the animation part, um, which was kind of a random thing. I'm not going to be able to get the same exact um, animation here, but I'm going to show you how I did it basically. First, I created a plane here. I'm going to go into the front view and I'm going to grab it on the z-axis and move it down. And next I'm going to choose uh, the monkey head again. And under our panel up here, I'm going to go up to physics. And I'm going to choose cloth. And I put this to, I think I did rubber or silk. I don't remember exactly what I did. I was just playing around. And at this point, if we hit Alt-A to animate, you can see how they kind of it's kind of random. I think that the reason it's not actually acting like rubber like a regular object would is because they're probably bouncing off each other. And there's probably options you can play with to change that. But that's kind of the 
the animation I wanted. We added in this plane and I made it a collision and it affects the, uh, you can see right there, they, didn't, they don't completely spread out because they're actually hitting that plane right there. So depending on what effect you want, you can have that object there as a collision. If you move it further away, I'm sure it will affect it differently. So once again, it's just playing around so you get what you want. So that's more like it, so it doesn't go too far out. So let's go to our camera view here. We'll move up a couple of frames, and we'll hit F12 there to render that out. So you're getting the general idea of how I did the animation here. The next step I took, and once again, the shadows are kind of noisy, and that's just because the samples are so low. I'm leaving them low for the tutorial just to speed up rendering. Um, the next thing I did was I took our render and I went into the uh, compositor, compositing here, and I'm going to turn on nodes and backdrop. And basically what I did, and I'm not really going to go through this because I just did a tutorial on this, was I created a vignette effect and I also changed the brightness and contrast and the saturation. That's all stuff uh, that's going to take a while to do to render out. Um, I also added a... Um, lens distortion a little bit in the final copy. So I had just a bunch of random effects, which I've gone over and I'm going to continue going over compositing more and more in the future. But that's how I got the basic effect. And I'm going to show you right now, if I can find it, right here. This is what that output looked like. So that's just one little loop through from the original video that still has two effects that I have not applied to it. One of them was I had to create a, well, that, I'm sorry, that one does have the loop effect to it, because originally the video would go like this and would end right about there. Well, I had to loop it back so it would make a loop cleanly and go back, if that's, if I'm making any sense. So basically, I'm just gonna say, at this point, I would have rendered out the short video, which would have been half the loop, and then I went into video editor. So now in our video editor, so I went to our presets here and chose video editing. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to import the video that I would have already rendered out. Now you could just import the, the scene, but the problem with that is while you're trying to work in here, it's gonna try to render and composite each frame. It would be very slow. So it's, I think, best to render out that video and then bring it in here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hit Shift A and we're gonna click Movie gonna to go to where I have that little animation out, rendered out. It's a 100 frame loop. Well, it's not a loop yet. That's what we're gonna do right now is turn it into a loop. So, there's our first frame. We go all the way through until the end right there. And uh, I'm gonna hit Shift D and just to clone that and put a second copy right there. Now, you'll notice that when we get to the end here, if you watch the video up here, I go over and then boop, it's back into a circle. That's not what we want. It's back into a sphere, I guess I should say. It's not what we want. What we're going to do here is with the second video selected, we're going to go down here to the video options and click backwards. So now it has reversed this video. So we have a video that will loop back and forth. We'll go to right about here, which is uh, 200 frames. So down here we'll select 200 for our render options. So we'll have a 200 frame loop animation and then we will click and drag out this window here and I'm going to change this to user preferences I'm oh, sorry not user preferences um, properties and here are our render options we've already set it to uh, to be um, 200 frames in length so what we're going to do here is we're going to just choose whatever video output we want and wherever we want to save it I'll just call it loop dot avi if you don't put dot avi it will name it dot avi but it will put uh, the number of frames will say from 0 to 100 so depending on what you want whether you want those numbers in the name or not you can choose that and then uh, under let's see presets here I uh, the original video was taking a long time to render out uh, at a high definition resolution it was taking about four sec or sorry four minutes a frame so I actually did this video at a standard resolution just to save me some time so basically 
you choose what you want depending on how much time and processing speed my computer is not the fastest so in this case I chose a low thing once again we already have it set to 200 frames uh, 29.97 frames per second is fine and then uh, we can just come up here and hit animate and it will render out that loop and the last part of what I did was basically I just uh, we could have done it in Blender but I had done it in Caden Live just basically keyframing uh, that loop to have different um, hues so it would, wouldn't be blue all the time it would go from blue to green to yellow to you know whatever um, so that's just adjusting the hues I'm not even going to go over that in this video I had done that in Caden Live but you could do that right here in Blender as well anyway I hope that answers some questions. I hope that you have a great day. I thank you for watching. Please visit the links in the description, and I hope that you have a great day.